This is the 13th of June of 2022. A couple of days ago, I was asking God to show me something that I could share with, with you all and that I could study. And he did. Thank you, Lord. So we've entitled this, What are the Sacrifices God Desires of You? And before we go further, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for letting us sit at your feet again and study your word. I thank you for the people that tuned in, and I ask you to put a hedge of protection around all of us while we do study your word. Give us understanding, knowledge, and wisdom, Father, and peace. Please upload this video quickly with no um, distractions and no hiccups, and, up, and touch my eyes and my understanding and my speech, Father, and let only your word go out in Jesus' name. First off, we're going to look at Psalms 141 and verse 1 and 2. Oops. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting of my hands as evening sacrifice now we see here that we are to cry unto him we are to give ear to him we are to pray to him we are to lift our hands unto him this is worship this is what you do when you worship him from the heart okay first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18 First Thessalonians, five, verse sixteen to eighteen. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And you know what? I'm going to go down to nineteen also, because it says. Quench not the spirit. And this is what he expects out of us. He expects adoration from you. He, accept, he expects praise from you, gratefulness from you, thankfulness from you. He, de he desires that you give him your all and then he can give you his all. But it's always up to us. Are we going to accept him or not? He's given us free will. These are things that he wants from us. Okay, so what kind of sacrifice does God want from his creation? And I'm talking about from his children. Okay, he wants us to offer ourselves. He wants all of us. And once again, he wants a relationship with us. If we choose him, we choose his son, Christ Jesus, as our Savior. And we follow Christ he sees us through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for that knowledge, Father. Okay? That's what he wants out of us. He wants us to come to him with a, a humble, repentant heart. Okay? He wants us to praise him. He wants us to think, be thankful for everything he has done for us and to remind him of his word. Here's another thing he wants you to do. Okay? One is, he wants us to offer ourselves wholeheartedly. He wants us to live in every way for him daily. That means inviting the Holy Spirit to live inside you. And the evidence of having Holy Spirit living inside of you is when you're praising him, Holy Spirit gets excited and will speak through you in an unlearned language. See, that's our, that's our down payment for our eternal inheritance, or in other words, our eternal life with him. So don't, don't uh, be thinking that Holy Spirit is not for today and it's not for you and it died out on the apostles. You know, Satan has a lot of lies that he's stirring up in people. And we just have to study his word. There's nothing he wants out of you. You have to study his word and not only his scriptures, but we have to study and look into the where's, the when's, the how's, the who's he's being spoken to, what are the, you know, the cultural values, what was the culture at that time, what time period was this, who is speaking to whom. And when you look at all those things, it's called hermeneutics. And when you're looking into hermeneutics, you're getting a better understanding of 
the whys, the where's, and the winds of how the scriptures are written, in fact. How were they wrote, how are they written, and how were they put together. How awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay? And he also wants a relationship with all of us. See, he wants a relationship with all of us. Remember, God created relationship. Man created religion. It's like my husband says, who created uh, the Titanic? That sank, okay, very quickly, in fact, into its voyage. Men created that. Men said it was indestructible and unsinkable. Boy, were they wrong. They missed a few things there. Okay, who created the ark? God was the architect behind Noah and his, and his sons putting the ark together. And it's, it floated. And it's still on Mount Ararat. I'll be, I'll be in, uh, it's disintegrating some over the thousands of years. But it floated and it did its job. Thank you, Father. Okay, he also um, wants us to give all of ourselves to him. And in turn, like I said, he will give all himself to, to you. It's a heart issue. He gave you free will. You choose to accept him. You choose to believe his promises. You choose to study his word. You choose to look into the hermeneutics. You choose Christ as your savior. You choose to be his follower. I don't say I'm a Christian. I say I'm a follower of Christ. And therefore, as a follower of Christ, everything that is in the word, I try to understand and I try to do. And you know, I'm human, I'm in flesh, so I fall and I have problems. There's a lot of things, you know, and faith and trust. And especially when, when you're a person that's done for you, worked two and three times all your life, took care of the kids, took care of the family, and then all of a sudden you find out you can't do that anymore. You know, it's, it's an eye-opening. It's eye-opening. It was eye-opening for me. It took me a long time to trust. And I'm, I'm really being open and honest with you right now. It took me a long time to fully trust Christ. And so I trust what he says to do and his commandments. And all we can do as being human is come to him with a repentant, humbled heart. You come humbly to him and he hears your prayer. Because he knows where your heart is at. Right? In other words, you know, he wants to be number one. And he expects to reign supreme in your life. And he should reign supreme in your life. Think about that. Okay. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31, Jesus tells us to love him and others the way he loves us. Now, it took me a long time, I mean, decades to understand, you know, his love is different than my love or a human love. Humans have many kinds of love and I have a video talking about that but his love is agape love not just phileo love that friendship love and not just that eros which is that sexual love his friend is his his love is is I love you I love you no matter what and I expect you to listen to me I expect you to follow my commandments and follow Christ but I love you no matter what even if you make mistakes this is why Jesus is our advocate. If you make a mistake, you fall, we're flesh. If we do something or think something we shouldn't have, we go and ask for forgiveness, and Jesus is right there to be our advocate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for making a way. So let's read uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31. Mark 12, 30 to 31. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mark 12, 30 to 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, another thing is we're commanded to share the gospel. And 
And I know there's another video I did on um, you know, how you share the gospel in the gospel, and what we're expected to do. But there's a, there's one that my husband Dan put up about what he expects out of us and what the Great Commission is and the um, and what the general. So there's a, a a little commission, and I can't remember the exact word he used, but there's a Great Commission. The little commission now was where you remember where Jesus told his disciples to go only to the house of Israel. That was Jesus' call house of Israel but after he was crucified it opened the door for everyone because after Pentecost Holy Spirit was given out so the Great Commission he when he came back when he came back for those several times he remember he was seen 40 uh, 40 days and nights by people by his disciples by people that loved them and he ate and drank with them also at that time but he said that that time to spread the gospel and i'm going to read that to you so that spreading the gospel to all nations all peoples all tribes all tongues is the great commission the 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 small commission is is where you share it you accept christ and you share it with your family you know like i said your children your spouse your loved ones your neighbors and then after that, he expects you to take it to the world, which is what I'm doing on this video, because this video will go around the world, praise God. So we're going to look at Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark 16, verse 15. Okay, Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, we're also going to read Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, when he says in 19, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, we know, or in, some, in this case here, Holy Ghost. That when you baptize someone nowadays after the cross, after Christ, after Christ died, after the Holy Spirit was given out, right? We know that we baptize in the name of Jesus. There is no other name whereby we may be saved. That's the word tells us. And you know this, like I said, this is to go around the world. So we're going to look at um, Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse fourteen. Matthew. 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for the, a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, I don't know of too many other places in the world that that uh, has not heard the gospel preached. We, you know, we have internet, we have television, we have evangelists, we have traveling people, traveling ministers, and, you know, go out on missions and all that. So, th this, is, this is what he expects. And we also know that there's not much more, if anything, that is stopping Christ from coming to get his children. In fact, I believe he wants to come. In my heart, I know he does. It's Father God that knows. Remember, Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour. But we are commanded as believers to know the times and the seasons in which we do. As we can see what's going on. Now, Ezekiel chapter 37 and 38 have to be fulfilled. But chapter 38, war, nobody knows, even the um, scholars, ones that study the words, even... The um, 
people like Amir Safadi from Behold Israel. He's a Jew, and he studied the word. And so he knows the words from the Jewish word before they were translated, which that makes a big deal too. When you look at the translations, some words, they don't uh, express the meaning or the full meaning. So we have to keep those things in mind when we're studying the word. And when words pop out to you, like, like I'll, take, I'll, I'll take me for an example. When I'm reading scriptures, before I read, I ask for a hedge of protection and I ask Holy Spirit to show me and you know, show me what he's trying to show me, what he, what he wants to teach me. And then, he, then a word will pop out or a sentence or a place or an idea and I write that down and then I go research that. And so that's where a lot of the studies come from, too, because of a lot of research. Praise you, Jesus. And that research and tells, me, and, and tells me to go and look at hermeneutics and go and look at the meaning of the word. And then I had my husband, Dan, when, when he's doing videos, he takes words and he goes way back to the Greek and the Hebrew meaning. And I do that sometimes, like Holy Spirit leads me, but um, he, he does that in his teachings, which he's a good one to listen to also. Um, so that is where I'm going to leave this with you and I thank you once again for coming and being with me on this study thank you God bless you God bless everyone that listens to this video